The final weekend of the midseason showdown is coming up quickly, and TSM, Team Liquid, and Cloud9 are all cramming in as much last minute prep as they can. So I figured I'd help them out by giving them a cheat sheet on how to beat each other. And we can use it as an experiment to find out which teams are smart enough to take strategic advice from Travis Gafford Industries. We'll kick things off with TSM. If you're going into a BO5 against Bjergsen's team, the first thing to recognize is that they're vulnerable in the early game. So make sure to attack them by playing quickly and aggressively into the enemy jungle with your mid laner ready to push and move. Last week, 100 Thieves actually did this pretty successfully. Ryoma was able to push waves into Power of Evil at some good timings and move to support Closer in the river, which led to quite a few small wins throughout the series. I've called out Power of Evil and Spica for failing to coordinate that kind of pressure all year long, and recently I thought things had been improving, but they've regressed in the playoffs. Spica has gotten caught during some invades that he shouldn't have attempted, and Power of Evil has hung Spica out to dry by failing to push waves and lean out a lane to back him up. The effect of 100 Thieves' stronger mid-jungle coordination was an average 64.5 early game rating in their four games against TSM. They threw their leads away pretty dramatically in three of the four games, but the early game principle is still sound. Any TSM opponent looking at what Power of Evil and Spica are doing should know exactly what to do about it. Draft strong, skirmishing jungle and mid picks, track Spica's pathing, and go at him early and often. Later in the game, it's essential to execute cleanly around Baron. TSM have incredible Baron numbers, the best in the league. Last weekend against 100 Thieves, they secured every single Baron of the series. Their ability to manufacture Barons seemingly out of nowhere was a big part of how they came back from so many early deficits. It doesn't necessarily take anything special to deal with TSM's Baron control. The main thing is to play cleanly around the Baron area and avoid dramatic throws. So the right combination of early game pressure and disciplined play around Baron can be a good recipe to take down TSM. What about their opponents this Saturday, Team Liquid? Well, the first thing you need to do against TL is play a safe early game to prevent them from creating an early snowball across all three lanes. We've been highlighting Team Liquid's early game all season long. Between the regular season and mid-season showdown combined, they have an early game rating of 71.3, way ahead of the second best early game team, which is 100 Thieves with 60.1. Surviving TL's early game means focusing on your farm and avoiding bad fights. TL aren't the most aggressive team in the LCS, they're only third in kills of 15 minutes behind Cloud9 and Evil Geniuses. Their focus is more on playing PvE. They lead the LCS in Team CS at 15 minutes, and have taken the first turret in 81% of their games across the regular season of playoffs. They have 69% Rift Held control, which is also highest in the LCS, and they're second in first dragon rate. They're going to pick up CS leads and neutral objectives, so focus on trading where you can and don't try to chase your losses. The most difficult part of handling TL's early game is nursing your top laner through Alfari's 1v1 onslaught, so you should use as many resources as necessary to help with that. That might mean drafting ultra-safe picks like Scion, as Fudge did last week, or it might mean sending not only your jungler, but also your support or mid laner to help out with ganks or dive defenses. First blood over to Team Liquid, but they give two back. That was not a good dive. Assuming you can reach the mid game without a major deficit, it's time to make use of the scaling 5v5 comp you drafted. You did draft a scaling 5v5 comp, right? Okay, good. Forcing confrontations around late dragons, and especially around Baron, can be a good way to take games off Team Liquid. Despite generating such huge gold leads and playing from so far ahead, TL have only been third in overall dragon control and third in Baron control in the regular season and spring playoffs, and they haven't killed a single Elder Dragon this year, including the lock-in tournament. Late game team fighting around neutral objectives doesn't come with any guarantees, but it's going to be a more reliable way to beat TL than attacking them early, unless you have Blabber on your team to flip the script. And yep, flash root, into knockback is easy. Jensen's gonna get a heal, he's gonna dash, he's gonna flash, is it gonna be enough? Oh, the turret's gonna trade it back, so at least a kill comes back on Jensen's side. Speaking of Cloud9, they're the most difficult LCS team to plan against. They have the most flexibility in draft, especially coming out of the mid lane, and they can play well through any part of the map. If I were about to go up against C9 in a best of five, the first thing I'd look at is their ability to play through three lanes in the mid game, since most teams in the LCS don't really do this. C9 lead the league in lane control, which measures the average share of the game's total lane CS that a team takes. C9 are better than the rest of the LCS at sending players into the side lanes to push out waves, so they deny CS to enemy turrets and have less CS denied against them. That creates gold advantages, but pushing side waves is about a lot more than CS denial. It also creates access to the river and the enemy jungle to steal camps, secure vision, and get better setups for objectives. Overextend, and Cloud9, they've still got perks! Oh baby, it's a 
quadra kill for the mid laner. C9's lane control is one of the big reasons that they also lead the LCS in jungle control. How can we deal with C9's map play? The answer is to draft a lot of hard engage tools as part of an aggressive 5v5 team comp and use those tools for two things. First, go after their side laners and pick them off whenever possible. And second, prioritize early dragon stacking so you can force C9 to leave the side lanes and come to you, and then engage on them 5v5. Split pushing comps rely on a combination of cross map pressure and vision control to cover the vulnerabilities of their side laners. But C9's vision control isn't the best. Between regular season and playoffs, C9 are 8th in the LCS in wards per minute and 7th in control wards purchased per minute. The opportunity is there to attack C9's vision and make them feel more pressure from the fog of war. The main thing to avoid is letting C9 pull you all around the map, so make sure you can force fights on your own terms, and may the odds be ever in your favor. We'll find out this weekend whether TSM, Team Liquid, and Cloud9 use any of these strategies, and whether they can execute them well enough to book a ticket to Iceland for MSI. These days, everybody's talking about Wild Rift this, Wild Rift that. And you know what's actually wild? The amazing performance you can get with Alienware computers with NVIDIA graphics cards in them. Uh, you can go check them out over at Alienware.com slash Travis, and you can use Travis 10 off to save 10%. Also wild that you can do that. Uh, they've got some fantastic stuff, including the Alienware M15 R4. We love Alienware. Thank you so much for sponsoring my content, and we'll catch you next time.